All right, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Thursday. Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. And I have such an amazing topic um, for us to discuss today. And this is something that is widely searched for um, on the internet. And that is how to become an influencer. All right. And we're going to talk about how becoming an influencer can help you grow your planet marketing and IntelliTravel business. So if you do not have a notepad and pen already, shame on you. <laughs> right. Because note takers are money makers. So I hope everybody has their uh, notebook. So let's get into this because we have a lot to cover today. So again, the topic is how to become an influencer to build your business. Now, the first question we got to ask ourselves is what is an influencer? Well, an influencer also referred to as a social media influencer is someone who leverages social media channels to influence followers buying decisions. Successful influencers typically offer value on social media with quality content that shares specialized knowledge, edutainment, or insight on a niche topic. Influencers are also known for their ability to build relationships with an audience, to build an engaged and loyal follower base. <clears throat> I want to read that part again. Influencers are also known for their ability to build relationships with an audience to build an engaged and loyal follower base. We always say here in Planet Marketing, this is a relationship building business. So it is going to be in your best interest to learn how to become an influencer because that is going to make you a better marketing rep. Now, the definition of an influencer and what it means to be one is constantly evolving regarding what types of content influencers share on social media networks and how they share it. Influencers can range from TikTok dancers to people who post detailed how-to videos. Even with this variety, though, there are some consistencies. So, number one, Influencers don't, excuse me, influencers don't have to be celebrities in order to be successful. And that's important to know. Launching a career as an influencer is possible without already being a public figure. Thank God for that, right? Because <laughs> if you've been a single mom or a homeschooling mom for the last 12 years, right, you are nowhere near celebrity status. But isn't it nice to know? that no matter your social status right now, you can still become a, a successful influencer. And even though influencers can attract online audiences in the hundreds or thousands or even millions, they may not consider themselves celebrities in offline settings, right? So who you are on social media is not always an indication of who you are in reality, right? There are some people I see on TikTok and I'm like, I know you don't really cook like that for your family. You didn't wash anything. You feeding a dog, cat jumping on the counter. And you're like, this can't be real, right? So again, who you are in real life is not necessarily who you're going to be on social media. Distinctions like macro, micro, and nano influencer have worked their way into this industry's terminology to indicate the size of an influencer's audience. So macro influencers have 500,000 to a million followers. Micro influencers have 10,000 to 50,000 followers. And nano influencers have up to 10,000 followers. Now I know I've been to some of y'all Facebook pages and you got 800 friends. I'm gonna need y'all to work on that. <laughs> I'm gonna need, you ain't even in the game yet, right? Until you have at least 5,000 plus um, people following you. So this is something that you want to constantly work on is getting your 
um, you know, your follower base up, right? Because remember, your network is your net worth. Influencers have the potential to drive business growth. The power of being an influencer lies in the kind of marketing that's possible. You can garner the attention from social media users and brands that will pay you to promote their products and in influencer marketing campaigns thanks to connections you've built with their target audience, right? So I want you all to think, y'all know I am team planet marketing. I bleed orange and blue, right? But I also still believe in multiple streams of income and successful people get paid doing things that they're already doing, right? So if you think about the movie theaters, right? AM, let's take AMC, for example. They don't just make money playing the movie. The real money that they make is concessions. It's the popcorn, it's the soda, it's the goobers and the Twizzlers, right? So they find a way to make money in something that they're already doing. Well, I believe that that's something that we can all do in general here, right? So we're Planet Marketing Reps, we're IntelliTravel Travel Advisors, right? We sell fun, we sell recess, right? Well, guess what? I have an affiliate link for luggage. I'm talking about travel anyway. So why not have, you know, an affiliate link for something that's related to travel, right? And that could be anything. It could be, you know, some people, find, I found um, on Amazon, this little portable, perfume bottle spray right travel size right so it get it allows you to go in tsa and you put it on and you pump it and it fills it up so now you get to take your favorite fragrance on your trip and you're not violating any tsa rules right but if i love that product right i can get the you know promote that as an affiliate link and if a lot of people buy it i make a few coins right any money is good right we'll take it now Content created creators versus influencers. These are two different things and I need you to understand the difference between a content creator and an influencer. Now, let's talk about content creators first. Leveraging their expertise to attract potential customers, right? So content creators leverage their expertise to attract potential customers. They may sell products, services, and subscriptions directly to customers or sell ad space on their content. Create video, audio, photographic, and text-based content. They may prioritize website SEO and generating high quality content like video and audio material. So that is a content creator. Now let's look at what an influencers, uh, what an influencer does. Influencers leverage their social media followings to promote other brands. They leverage their social media followers to promote other brands. Well, what's our brand? Intel Travel, Planet Marketing, right? They may also earn commission through affiliate links on social posts or sell their own products directly to customers. What is our product? Intellitravel, right? They sell their own products. So I'm going to read that again. Influencers leverage their large social media followings to promote other brands may accept compensation in exchange for promoting or endorsing other brands, may also earn commission through affiliate links on social media or sell their own products directly to customers. They create video, audio, photographic, and text-based content, and they may prioritize building relationships with an audience and creating unscripted behind the scenes content. Key, may prioritize building relationships with an audience and creating unscripted behind the scenes content. This is why we're always telling y'all to go live. 
right? So that you can build that relationship with your audience. Influencer, influencer marketing is becoming mainstream across industries so that you can garner a follower base for almost any topic. As influencers enter the social media landscape, the industry may become more competitive. It's definitely more competitive. We see it all the time, right? Some of the foundational skills you'll need as an influencer include mastering the latest features of different social media platforms. Now, I know some of you are technically challenged and it's okay, but you cannot allow that to be the handicap that starts you, stops you from growing your following on social media. So you gotta learn how to do these things. None of us were born learning how to work social media and all these different apps and things, none of us, right? But we all had to learn it. And so don't be afraid to learn new things. So mastering the latest features of different social media platform, platforms, cultivating authentic relationships with an audience, that is key. <coughs> A lot of times, a lot of people are just posting on social media just to be posting. But that's not the point when you're looking to be an influencer. We post so that we can cultivate an authentic relationship with our audience. Um, developing content people love, editing audio and video content, live streaming, conveying your expertise or authority on a particular topic. All right, so you gotta be very, very intentional. So I'm gonna, let me go to the notes here. Uh, Director Short said you should be adding new people daily. Absolutely, you should definitely be friending people new deal, um, every day. Uh, Rochelle said, I've been deleting many individuals. They are inactive or not someone to connect with. Yeah, sometimes we need to clean out our friends list. Um, but you want to be careful with deleting people that you may think are not active because there are people that are following you. They never like, they never comment, but they're following you. So you do not want to delete someone um, thinking, oh, they're not engaging, but really they are following you very closely. And you'll know because one day they're going to jump in your inbox and say, um, I'm ready to get started. I've been following you for a while. And you're gonna be like, what, wait, I didn't even know. I, you ain't never liked, you ain't, I don't even know your name because you don't show up on my notifications. But I'm telling you, it happens all the time. People are watching you. So do not go crazy deleting people. I'd be very, very careful about doing that. <clears throat> all right, so let's get into these steps of how to become an influencer. Number one, complete basic business tasks. An important first step to in starting your influencer brand is to approach it like you would a business. By adopting business approaches, you can systematically attract your target audience and generate income. So here are some basic tasks that you should complete. Number one, articulate your influencer goals, such as building a following around your passions, working with specific brands you admire, right? What's our brand? Intellitravel, and generating income. Write a summary of the kind of influencer brand you want to create, including the topics you want to post about, the aspects of yourself you want to share, and your methods for generating income, such as, like I said, the affiliate links um, or sponsored social media posts. Gather influencer tools such as Canva for designing simple graphics or Linktree for aggregating links to the URLs you want your audience to, clink, to, um, to click. I've been talking about Canva for a while. Yes, there are a lot of apps out there that allow you to create images, add wording to photos and stuff like that. But I'm telling you, in my opinion, Canva is at the top of the list. There's so much you can do with Canva and it is very, very user-friendly. 
They have a free version and they have a paid version. When you are financially able to do so, I suggest upgrading to the professional version of it. It is an investment in your business, but it's also a tax write-off. So keep that in mind too, okay? Uh, Director Short said, I'm learning Canva now. She just got the pro version. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Rochelle said, Canva is great. You can do videos. Yep, you can make videos on Canva. You can create PowerPoints. You can create itineraries those welcome flyers for our new business partners you could create memes i mean canva canva's off the chain it's it's it is awesome um awesome awesome gina said they have a ton of templates a lot is already exactly that's the other thing that i love about canva is the templates right so you know, people, when it comes to marketing, right, there's there's color strategies, there's font strategies and things, right? Canva has all of these templates. So they already have the right font, the right sizing of the font, the color of the font. They already have all the, the color schemes. And all you got to do is replace it with your image, right? If there's an image on it, you could replace it with the image you want, the wording, you edit it, put your wording on it. And it is it comes out looking like a professionally um, piece of work. So I love, love, love um, again, Canva. Uh, Christy said, if you are an educator, you get pro for free. Uh, that is awesome to know, right? Too bad. I, I wonder if they would consider me an educator if I say I'm a coach. I don't know. Anyway. All right. So that was number one. Um, number two. And I've talked about this before. Identify your niche. Identify your niche. A niche is a highly specific marketing segment of consumers that an influencer can market to online. Your niche can be based on a category of content that you share on social media, as well as the demographics, age, location, income, etc., and psychographics values, beliefs, interests of your target audience. To gain, to gain clarity on your niche, get this, reflect on your passions, the content you mostly enjoy consuming and that you'd like to create yourself. The successful influencers you already know, the kinds of social media users that follow these influencers, the social media channels they use, and the kinds of products you love to use and would like to promote. Again, your niche is based on what you love. Very key that you get that. And if you focus on something that you love, you will be able to have authentic conversations and content about it because it's something that you love, right? Um, if I hate painting, I am not going to make painting my niche market. If I can't stand painting, I don't like getting dirty, I don't like all... If that's not my thing, then why would I make that my niche market? Even if it's something right now, you know, paint and sip is a, is a very big thing that a lot of people like to do, right? So what, But why would I make that my niche if I don't like to paint, right? Gardening. A lot of people right now are getting into gardening because our food supply sucks, right? Processed food is making people sick. So a lot of people are getting into gardening. Like, you know, I'm gonna grow my own fruits and vegetables. Well, guess what? Tanisha hates dirt. I do not like my hands getting dirty. I don't want dirt under my nails. So I am not gonna make gardening my niche market. I don't care how popular it gets, nor am I gonna feel comfortable and authentic talking about it. So again, you have to find your passion, your niche market should be something that you are passionate about, okay? You may find it useful to research industries, content categories, and hashtags on different social media platforms for inspiration. For example, Instagram's explore page may suggest content categories to you like indoor gardening, animal photography, college sports, whatever, that you can narrow down or tweak to reflect your unique angle. 
And if you're saying to yourself, well, Director Burke, I don't really have anything I'm passionate about. So I'm struggling with this niche thing. That's a problem. That means you need to get out the house <laughs> and start living and stop existing. And I'm not judging because that used to be me. Didn't go anywhere, didn't do anything, didn't interact with anybody. But you are the CEO of a business. You have a product that you need to sell so that you can get the things you want out of life. Get out of the house, go to some events, do something, be around people. You cannot build a business from behind your keyboard. Right? And moms, this is to my moms out there. You've been raising your kids. Your kids are grown now. You got to decide, you got to discover who you are, rediscover who you are. Right? Your kids 20, 30 years old, your whole life was, was around raising your children, but now they're gone, they're out the house, you're an empty nester. You got to rediscover who you are and you can't do that by just staying in the house. Right? All right. Number three, get to know your audience. Once you've identified your niche, conduct market research to understand your audience. That way you can develop a lasting connection with your audience and post valuable content that, satisfi that satisfy satisfies their interests and goals. I'm going to read that again. Once you've identified your niche, conduct market research to understand your audience. That way you can develop a lasting connection with your audience and post valuable content that satisfies their interests and goals. Click around on social media to find out. The content your audience responds to the most, the type of comments your audience makes on the social media influencers content, the questions and challenges they face. Right? So it's not just posting what you like. What, what does your network of people like? Right? Shamika may post something on Facebook and get a ton of hits on it. I could copy and paste that same exact thing on my page and get crickets. Nothing. Why? Because her audience is different than my audience. Not everything that's going to work for her is going to work for me. Not everything that works on my page is going to work on her page. So that's another reason why you got to be careful. And I see y'all do it all the time. Um, you know, somebody does a post and, you know, it goes viral on someone's page and now everybody's copying and sharing it. You got to be careful because it may not be appropriate for your audience. So it's not just about, oh, I posted today, check. No, did you post valuable content that's relatable to your particular audience? We don't just post just to be posting. Number four, create your influencer brand. Think of your influencer brand like you would a personal brand, a coherent presentation of your personality, values, and passions, and authority on a specific topic that you can use to explore your business potential. Take some time to get clear on the impression you want to leave on an online audience and what you want to become known for. You may choose to create an aesthetic for your influencer brand, complete with colors, fonts, even a brand voice. What is your brand, right? Some people wanna be known for cooking and coming up with amazing recipes and dishes. Other people wanna be known for hair and makeup, you know, their fashion style. So everything they put out, you know, is on point as far as fashion, right? Some people want to be known as being a professional entrepreneur, right? That's me. That's my brand. I'm a professional entrepreneur. That That's the brand that I chose, right? Other people want to be known as, you know, um, you know, a champion for single moms and how they can, you know, live their best life as a single mom and not have to um, live to the stereotypes of a single mom. You know what I mean? Like how to live your best life as a single mom and not the stereotypes of, you know, lack and not being able to do. I mean, there's just so many different things 
Uh, Erica, I see your hand is up. Yes, I have a, um, a problem or I struggle in this area because there are a few things that I like to do um, or I just share my life. So you might see me on a weight loss journey or you might see me traveling or you might see that I actually like I love kids and, you know, I worked in the ch with children for a long time. So sometimes when I'm trying to um, project something like or I go into one area, it's like I don't like I kind of have like a mixture of things that I'm doing. So is that OK or should I just focus on one thing? Like, how do you? Yeah, you kind of want to streamline it because you don't want to be all over the place because then you're not going to be able to target a specific market of people. Um, I heard you say you work with kids, so maybe that becomes your your target is, you know, um, you know, women, women with children, you know, that are moms. And now you're showing, you know, get take all the expertise that you've learned from dealing with kids and share that on your social media. So now you become known for the per the go to person that provides great information regarding children, whether it's education with children, entertainment with children, raising children, whatever that case may be cooking for children, traveling with children, you could do a whole bunch around just children. Does that make sense? Be it like being the traveling nanny. Oh, let me not say it too loud. <laughs> whatever again you got to find out what your you know this is why they say you got to research and find out what your audience likes and you know what they're going to be responsive to if that makes sense all right uh ebony i saw your hand up no ma'am it's not up uh okay true who's that true i see your hand up true yeah, sorry, I was trying to unmute. I'm getting ready for work. Um, so I, I am an affiliate marketer and um, travel felt, just fell into my lap whenever I was recovering from surgery. And so that's my main niche. But what you guys are saying is you don't really have to have one niche. Social media allows you, like I wanna say TikTok allows you five accounts per um, per device that you're on. And I market all kinds of other things as well as just travel. Okay. So I mean, if that... you can't decide on one, maybe you can decide, narrow it down to two and just whenever you post for one, maybe they can kind of coincide with like. So, right, right. I hear what you're saying. As a planet marketing rep and an IntelliTravel travel advisor, I do not advise being all over the place with multiple brands and products. That is no, not I what we do because no, I what don't, I, don't, I don't do that, but like if she wanted to do like traveling nanny or something, and then she wanted to just like do something else that had to do with travel, you can that way you can build your community with two different type of things. That's what I'm saying. Right. But the whole the whole point of me doing this is to show people how they can grow their planet marketing and their IntelliTravel business. And it is very easy to cross the line. And then now you've created a distraction for yourself. And now you're so busy creating content for this and content for that, that you're not prospecting to build your business. So you got to be very careful. That's why I'm tying everything to how you can use this to help you grow your planet marketing business and to attract more travel clients for your IntelliTravel business. So don't get caught up in, oh, I'm an affiliate marketer for all these different products. Don't do that. I don't well, recommend that. Well, that's that's not what I that's not what I was trying to um say. Okay, what do you go ahead? Clarify for like, if you couldn't like pick like if you couldn't like pick your thing that you wanted to do like your audience like if you wanted it to be like um, my audience I primarily target stay at home moms okay. but to join the business but <clears throat> obviously 
probably stay at home moms aren't going to want to buy a whole bunch of stuff for traveling. That's what I'm saying is like, you can pick two different, like if I wanted to market like luggage and the carry on things that you were saying, you can have two different social medias for both, you know, one for each. And then you're getting for the same thing. You're trying to sell travel and, you know, planet marketing, but you have two different audiences. That's what I was trying to say. I understand what you're saying. I just, and thank you for clarifying. Again, I don't recommend having multiple pages with different things. It becomes too much work. Period. It's too much. <clears throat> you want to be able to have the most impact and you want to be able to master um, the, the area that you're focusing on. And when you start having multiple pages, different audiences, in my opinion, it's too much and it, it's going to become a distraction. And now you're spending so much time um, looking for content for these multiple pages that you're not staying focused on the PS3, which is peaking interest, showing a plan, three-way call. So you got to be, again, be very careful with that. I don't recommend having a whole bunch of different accounts. I don't care how many accounts can fit on your devices. It becomes too much work. It becomes too much work. All right. So be careful with that. Again, I want you to be able to take what you have right now, and I'm just helping you, giving you some tools that will help you maximize what you have going on now so that you're more effective with your social media and you're not just like taking your Facebook page and just posting whatever and say, okay, I posted today. No, I want you to be more intentional about what you're posting, who you're posting to, the content that you're providing to them. Director Short? Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to chime in a little bit. So I agree with both. I just feel like, because um, I'm reading the comments in the chat as well. Like with me, before I even started the business, I had a Facebook group. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of people that I had got because I was focusing on like mental health, being a single mom and how it takes a toll on you. You know, a lot of stuff that people don't tell you about it. So I get where she's coming from because it's like my brand is I do want people to know that I'm a single mom and you know I'm a blue so I want people to know I'm a fun single mom and loving with my daughter because that's me that's who I am personally right. you know and then I got my planet marketing intel travel and that's what draws people to me because they like dang if she could do it, I could do it too like I had this lady which out to me that I went to school with um, and she just was like, you know, she done try Mary Kay, she done try um, other things. And she was like, the thing I like about your company is I actually see the results, mm -hmm. you know, by me coming into business and by me hitting directorship and things like that. So I do want to say, like um, Director Burke was saying, if you cook, cook, tie that into um, your business and different things like that. Maybe make a Caribbean dish if you're going to do... Um, a Jamaican theme this week, maybe make something, some jerk wings or something like that. So yes, tie it in, but at the same time, you do want to focus on your business and you don't want to have multiple accounts where, cause it gets draining. Like it'd be some days I'm like, I'm not posting a video today. <laughs> like I don't got time for that. Right. But you know, just stay consistent in what you're doing and also show your audience that you are a real person. That's my thing. I yeah. want people to know I am a real person. I'm Shanae. Right. You know, so that's all I wanted to say. That's good. That's good. Shamika? I was just going to uh, second what she was saying. Um, having those multiple accounts can become time consuming. So what I do is, even if I'm on multiple social media platforms, that post, that video, that whatever is going to Instagram, it's going to TikTok, it's going to wherever so I can maximize my time because it's, yeah. it could be consuming. You could just find yourself strolling, strolling, trying to find this, trying to find that. And before you know it, you're going to spend two hours just trying to post on all these things. So um, I'm definitely, because my market is single parents, but single moms and um i have been using my insights more to see who is you know my most engaging audience so i could relate to them more mm -hmm. um and also seeing what cities and states 
that you know I'm um, seeing have more engagement on my page as well. So maybe use your insights more to help you market to your people. Um, it's been Absolutely. definitely a great thing. Absolutely. And here's the thing: let's say cooking is your thing, right? And so your social media, um, you know, has a lot of stuff about you cooking and dishes and stuff like that, right? And then you talk about you know, uh, like you were saying, you know, a Caribbean, you do a Caribbean dish, and then you can tie that into, you know, I, I got this group trip to Jamaica, da, 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 da. So, right. So now you're attracting people who love Caribbean food, who maybe want to go to the Caribbean and have that authentic Caribbean meal, right. And now you've created a group trip based on that. But the thing is, people get to know you for your cooking. They trust you because you provide good recipes. So now, when you do that post about you have a business opportunity has nothing to do with cooking but when you do that income post that you have this business opportunity it's the people that have trusted you and been following you about your cooking that said oh well you know what she comes up with all these good i, I enjoy her content her recipes are, um, let me see what this business opportunity is about that's what i'm talking about that's what I'm saying, not trying to go left with having multiple things. Take your niche, it's about building those relationships. Once these people trust you, then when you put out content about your business, they're gonna be open to looking at it. Whether or not they sign up or not, irrelevant. You can't control the sign up. We just want the people to look at the opportunity, but you they have to trust you first before they'll be willing to take a look at your opportunity. And so again, if you're putting out this content that you yourself are passionate about, they will build, that's how you're building that trust with them. So that now, you know, they may reach out to you when they wanna book a trip, right? Because they trust you, they like your content, right? Erica? Um, I wanted to say that I do agree with you on that. I, like I said, I do share my life. And I'm only, I'm very new to this. I'm only a month in, but people have been following me for so long. So when they see me doing something, they're like, oh, I want to, I want to see what that's about because they've been seeing me do other things. And so it's like, they've built this relationship with me and mm -hmm. people are always telling me I inspire them. And so this is one of those things where I'm like, well, let me inspire you into some money because the likes are cool. The comments are cool. But let's get to some money. So that's one of the things that made me want to get into this too is because I know that I do have people that follow my life and follow me on a day to day. But let's go get to some money. Exactly. Exactly, Erica. And here's the other thing that I want you to just be careful when it comes to these affiliate marketing links and having multiple you don't want to become the person that's like, buy this, 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 buy this. That is a turn off. Okay. So I'm always a little skeptical when people say, oh, I'm an affiliate marketer. I'm like, okay, you're a walking spammer, always asking people to buy a product. That is not how you become an influencer. It is not. Like I said, I have my affiliate link for luggage maybe once a month i will post my affiliate link for the luggage in my travel group maybe because i don't want people like oh here she go asking me to buy something again all she people will turn you off if you do that so you got to be you got to finesse that that those affiliate links don't become a commercial for a whole bunch of brands don't do it be your authentic self like erica said she's showing her life this is your re use your social media as your reality show who you are what you do in the morning what you do in the afternoon or whatever how your life as an entrepreneur your life as a travel business owner your life as a mom your your life as a as a wife your life as retired military your life as whatever that is for you it's about showing your life your social media is your reality show but you're an entrepreneur so show that and just find that niche that you can really provide valuable information the way you become an influencer and they said it in here is by providing valuable information that people don't have to buy and spend money on that's how you win kiana oh 
Okay, so I was just gonna say y'all got me so excited and so proud because okay, I'm a I'm a content creator. So I help people like do their flyers, like build their brand, right? And this conversation is the very conversation that I have with a lot of people because they just think it's simple as doing a flyer and it's not. And it's like how do you get people to understand it? And I always tell people when you're building a brand, whether it's personal or professional, you ask yourself three questions. What do people like you for? What do they know you for? And then what, what did they trust you for? Mm -hmm. Everything else after that is easy. Yes. Yes. So if it's travel, cool. But before that, I can't remember who it was talking before I hopped on, but she said people like her because she inspires them. That's me. Like people I had, I'll never forget. Maybe six years ago, I met this lady out in public in a grocery store. And she was like, hey, Kiana. I'm like, hey, girl. You know, I don't know who this is. (laughs) Hey, girl. It's like, well, you know what? Where you been? You haven't posted in a while. And, you know, you just don't understand, like, your posts when you make them. Like, they really helped me throughout my week. Keep wow. going. You all right? And I'm like, bro, what? I don't know who this lady is. But right. she was so excited to see me. And I say all that to say, if you can get the like, no trust factor together, anything else you put in your pipeline, people are more likely, if it fits for them, to support. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you so much for for validating, right? This is what she does. She's a content creator and she's validating exactly what I'm saying. What, and I love what you said, Kiana, can you repeat those three things that you ask people? That was really good. What do they like you for? What do they know you for? What do they trust you for? There you go. Like, no trust. Again, people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. So there you go. Shamika. I just got a quick question. So would it be considered an affiliate link if I'm posting like my Viator link or would it be like something totally different? Yeah, if- Viator link. Yeah, that's an affiliate link. I mean, that's one of our suppliers. But usually if you find a certain product, right, that that you like, let's say you love a certain, lo- um, I don't know, lipstick, a certain lipstick, right? A lot of times if you go to that supplier's website for that product, if you look on the bottom on the footer, they may have an affiliate program where you can get, you know, a commission um, or a certain percentage off if people buy the product through the link that they provide you. So that's all it is, is they provide you with the link. It's tied to you. You tie your bank account to it or whatever. And so anybody who buys the product through that link, um, you earn a commission. That That's what that is. But again, what I'm saying is keep it related. And again, this is Planet Marketing and IntelliTravel. Keep it related to your business and your product. This is all about building your IntelliTravel and Planet Marketing business. So you don't want to be all over the place. Find a niche. Stick with it. Okay, let's keep going because I have some more stuff and we we got like 11 minutes. Explore your content strategy. A large part of an influencer brand is the content you share on social media channels. Make a list of individual pieces of content that explore different facets of your category. For example, if your thing is going to be cooking, you could go all over the place with that with content down to you know you have content on the types of pots and pans you use and why you use it right non-stick right versus cast iron versus i mean there's so much you could do with that right then you can get into organic versus non-organic so much content just on that right where are you buying your groceries from grocery stores versus farmer's market. I mean, there's so many things. You can go so deep into that. So look at the different facets of your category. Don't just be one dimensional, right? You may find it useful to set up a content creation calendar that determines the frequency and structure of your posts. For example, Monday posts could offer a glimpse at your morning routine. Wednesdays could be reserved for Ask Me Anything, live streaming. And Friday posts could offer educational tutorials. Number six, 
optimize your online presence. Before officially launching your influencer brand and posting content in earnest, take time to optimize your online presence as a whole so that you can build brand equity. Your online presence can include creating new social media accounts for your influencer brand or converting your existing accounts into influencer accounts. Build a website that social media followers and brands can visit to learn more about you. Subscribe to your email content and read blog articles or other longer form content, right? So one of the things, yes, I have my planet, my, my personal page. I use that to market my planet marketing business to attract people who want uh, to partner with me. I have my travel group where I only focus on getting clients for my IntelliTravel business, right? But then I also have a YouTube channel. So people are able to go, and I put all types of things on my YouTube channel, but I have different playlists, right? There's a playlist related to me building my house and decorating my house. There's a playlist for educational, business education, right? There's a playlist for travel. So when I'm going places and I do tours and site inspections, right? So have, um, you know, when I say create other social media accounts, they're still referencing me where people can learn more information about me. It's not like I'm one person on this account and then I'm another person on that account. That's not what I'm saying, right? Keep it all together. It's, it's like an ecosystem that you're creating, but it's all related. Um, and then set up an email marketing system specifically for your influencer brand. Again, people can register and subscribe on my youtube channel right i have um i've done landing pages where i can connect people's information i have constant contact where i now create a newsletter for my intelli travel business right and so people can subscribe to my constant contact and once a month i'm putting out a newsletter and i might post um in that newsletter a group trip that i'm offering I may run a contest and announce the new contest winner in my, um, you know, in my um, newsletter. I might post, post some information about how to get passports or anything related to travel. Um, you know, I'm going to put in that newsletter. Number seven, select your channels. Along with optimizing your online presence, you need to select the social media platforms and marketing channels through which you'll influence and inspire an audience. Be selective about your channels offers two main advantages. Number one, you can focus your efforts on mastering the features of one or two channels. And two, you can choose the platform or channel that works best for the type of content you share. Here are some general differences between platforms. So YouTube influencers tend to perform well when promoting products that require an explanation or video tutorial to use. TikTok influencers perform well in categories like entertainment, dance, pranks, fitness, and home improvement and typically cater to Generation Z audiences. Instagram influencers perform well when their content leverages imagery. Categories that are popular on Instagram include fashion, beauty, food, travel, and fitness. All right, so that's some good information there. Number eight, post unique content on a regular basis. Once you've set up your online presence and selected the channels and platforms on which you'll appear, it's time to start posting content. Bear in mind that it can take time to see tangible results from your content efforts. Consistency is the key. We say that with everything, right? Post regularly. <coughs> Number nine, engage your audience. At the same time that you post regular content on social media, engage with members of your audience to increase your know, like, and trust factor. Here are some engagement methods. Like, comment on, and repost content by your followers and fellow influencers in your niche. Respond to comments on your post. That's a big one. A lot of times I go to um, some of y'all pages and you'll do a post and you'll get a lot of um, 
replies or comments and you don't reply to the comment. Do you realize you are killing your algorithm by not replying to every single comment? And sometimes I'll see a comment where someone says they're interested in, you know, the let's say you do a business post and someone comments that they want more information and I'm looking and you haven't replied to it. Even if you privately reply to that person, you got to reply publicly because that is what's going to increase your algorithm. And that's what's going to make other people say, you know what, I want to know, you know, what information she's sharing in the inbox as well. Um, start conversations on social media by asking your audience questions about their interests and opinion. Right? If you notice a lot of times on the YouTube videos, they'll say, you know, hey, I'm having a hard time with um, keeping a curl in my hair. I've tried so many things. If you guys have any suggestions on products that you're using that can help my hair hold a curl, you know, comment below. So now you're going to get some engagement, you're going to get some conversations going in your comments. <clears throat> or, you know, again, if it's cooking, right, you might say, you know, um, I've always used olive oil, but I kind of want to dip into some other types of oils, you know, post in the comment, what type of oil do you prefer to cook with? Now you're going to get some engagement, right? Message your most engaged followers to ask them what kind of content they'd like to see you create. That's a good one. Number 10, we're almost done. Collaborate with other brands. As social media users start to take notice of your content, follow your accounts and look to you for entertainment or information, brands may reach out to you to collaborate. You can also pitch brands directly. Prepare for these opportunities in advance so that you can earn income and work with brands in a way that aligns, aligns with your goals by completing the following tasks. Make a list of brands you'd like to collaborate with. That's a big one, right? So if you're into, I don't know, cooking, right? If that's your thing and you're like me, you love your cast iron, right? You might say, I want to be able to work with Lodge, Lodge Tech, right? Because they make cast iron or whatever. So that might be a brand that you say, you know, I'd love to be able to work with them, right? So make a list of the brands that you like. Um, decide how you want to collaborate them, including sponsored posts and affiliate <laughs> affiliate marketing, as well as how you want to monetize your efforts. Draft a description of content that you can create to promote various products that you can use for your website or for contacting brands via email or messenger. Draft a template for pitching these brands directly. Create an influencer profile on sites like influence.co and Intellifluence to create to create to increase your visibility and connect with brands again our, we have a lot of suppliers already so we kind of already have this built in right delta vacations right that's our supplier that's a brand that we're going to promote funjet vacations travel impressions disney we already have that we already have the brands that we're associated with um that we get to monetize because when people book with that brand right with disney if they book a disney vacation you're getting paid so we already have these built-in brands that we want to work with but can you stretch it out beyond that yeah based on your niche market absolutely again you just want to be careful that you're not all over the place because then your, your audience is going to be confused right last one number 11 refined your influencer skills and strategy. As your list of followers and brands collaborators grow, commit to regular upkeep of your influencer business. Set aside time periodically to conduct research on new influencer tools and techniques, social media platforms, latest features, and how your audience is behaving online. That goes back to what Shamika was saying, you know, checking your insight right? Because they give you information on who's looking, who's engaging, who's your targeted audience, right? Take note of which content that gets the most engagement from your audience and be willing to adjust your content strategy accordingly. If you do a post that kind of 
goes viral, gets a whole bunch of hits, save it. You can save that post so that you can go back and recycle that post or tweak that post or, you know, do another post that's similar in nature that will also go viral and get a lot of engagement. And stay connected to your audience and seek to understand their interests, goals, and challenges more intimately. All right. So that, wow, it's 101. Woo! That was a lot of content in that time. Did anybody find value in our topic today? Who wants to share? Uh, let's get just a couple of takeaways before we end this, lot, this uh, session. Any takeaways? I'll say um, my biggest takeaway, we've heard a lot of these things, but I like um, because Facebook lets you know who your top fans are to kind of message them and say, hey, um, what kind of content is it that you look for or that you like the most to kind of get some people going? So I really I like that part. Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else have a takeaway? I like the um, people do business with like what she said, what do they know you for? What do they like you for? And um, what do they trust you for? I really like that. Yes, yes, that's good, that's good. Anybody else, one more. I can say that I am guilty of not replying. So I'm about to get back on Facebook and start replying back on um, like my status, what I put on today. Excellent, <laughs> excellent, excellent, Benita. Well, thank you everyone for today. I thought this was a great and responsible topic to help people with their social media so that you're not just posting for no reason, right? Now you can be more intentional um, with your posting and put some, some more time and energy into it. Again, I will be uploading this to my YouTube channel. I know it was a lot of information, so you'll be able to go back and you know watch it again, take some more notes. But thank you all and I will see you next week. Love y'all. Bye, everyone. Bye. Uh, peace.